The opinions expressed in the following program are completely those of Dave Merlino. Don't get caught off guard. Left, right, left, right, 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 right. George's new voice. Dave Merlino. This is the last stand on earth. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. This is the last stand on earth. No government ever voluntarily reduces itself in size. So government programs once launched never disappear. Actually, a government bureau is the nearest thing to eternal life we'll ever see. This is the last stand on earth. It's the Dave Merlino Show. Welcome back to the program. As I had mentioned, we are very happy to have... Bob Vandervoort. Bob, did I get it right? Dave, you got it right. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pronounced Vandervoort. It's one of those complicated Dutch names, but uh, um, you know, like I heard you say at the top of the hour, you know, your your ancestors had to learn English. They have an Italian background, and and uh, my Dutch ancestors had to learn English. So I mean, we, you know, we we have something in common. We have we have family that needed to assimilate and to do well in this country. So. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm just I'm happy to be on the show with you and and to talk about the issue of the the English language in this country. Thanks, thanks Bob. Bob is is with proenglish.org. Check out the website proenglish.org. I'm going to post it up on my Facebook page as well. Facebook is the Dave Merlino show on facebook.com. Bob, first of all, it it says here you're from Illinois. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Originally from uh, Chicago area. Okay, I'm 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 sorry about that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we've we've seen better days in terms of uh, politics. <laughs> You've given us uh, Obama and Blagovich. Uh, yes, and 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 now you've elected Rahm Emanuel as the mayor up there. I'll tell you, I right I, to... I, I would not want to live in Chicago for all the tea in China, my friend. Well, well, that's why I had to get out of there. You know, the the Daily Machine and followed by Blagojevic. It was uh, it's, it's a tough place for. Uh, for uh, you know, for people who want to do something positive in this country to work, so I wouldn't be surprised if they got the flags at half mast in Chicago because Kim Jong Il died. Well, probably, yeah, <laughs> probably the city council will, will make a motion to to honor him. So, <laughs> all right, let's get down to uh, this proenglish.org website. It is loaded with information. Okay, first of all, I want to mention they have a map on there of the states where English is the official language. And where mm-hmm. and where it's not, and that's a very interesting uh, map, uh, Bob. Some of, some of a lot of the left leaning states, except California, uh, don't have English as the official language, and then most of the right leaning states do, except for Texas, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. is obviously very right leaning, and they, according to your map, do not have official English legislation. So. How, how does that work? The ma- the map is up to date, and this is the states have have dictated uh, on a statewide level that English is the official language. Well, yes, that's correct, uh, Dave. The states have the the ability to pass their own laws declaring English to be the official language, and and in some of these cases, the uh, the states got those passed through a referendum. I think in California, that's that's how that came about in the nineties. Um, and of course, we're also at Pro English. We're pushing uh, some bills in Congress that would make English the official language at the, for federal government. Uh, for, it would declare it our our nation's common language for purposes of government. And uh, you may want to you may want to have your listeners check that out on our website. We have more information about the about the legislation at proenglish.org. And uh, there's two bills in particular: one by Congressman Steve King. H.R. 997, and another one by New York's Congressman Peter King, H.R. 1164, which would make English our official language. And your listeners may want to check and see if their congressmen are uh, are on board with that and, and find out where they stand on that. So, No, it, it, it seems to make sense to me. How, how are you going to have – how are you going to govern with, with a bunch of different languages, Bob? It, it's just mm-hmm. – it's very difficult. And you have some stories on here, if you wouldn't mind sharing a few, that that really, I don't know how to how to say it, Bob. It just runs over English. I mean, it's it's outrageous. 
Right. Well, the uh, I think the biggest one that's that's getting a lot of attention. Last week, the story came out that in the California public school system, at least a few of the school few of the school districts were having the students recite the Pledge of Allegiance in both English and Spanish. And uh, there's there's a fair bit of controversy about that, as as there should be. Um, I mean, this is. Uh, you know, if we're going to have the pledge recited in Spanish, where does it stop? Is the is the problem, and you know, it's leading us down the road of linguistic balkanization. So that's uh, that, and there's been stories in the past where people are are singing the national anthem in Spanish, and and it's just we're we're. Dave, I'm concerned the country's going down a path of multiculturalism, and it's going to fragment us instead of keep us together. And that's that's why pro-English has been pushing so hard to make English our common language. And what's interesting, Bob, is here's here's how the left or the media will paint me. Uh, racist, you don't want to help anybody, and you know, trying to hinder people. But here's the thing. Here's what's silly. Someone comes to this country, if they're a kid, let's say, for example, and they speak only Spanish, helping them learn English will only help them. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to hinder anybody. I'm trying to help people. I wouldn't move to France and expect to get along really well without speaking any French at all. Right. And, and nobody would. And right. So, and so the, the battle we have is how we're going to be painted by the left and the media. And the fact of the matter is we're the good guys. We're the ones trying to help people. You make English the language. You help people learn English. And boom, it's better for everybody. Well, that's absolutely right, Dave. And 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 we th- we have cite to studies that show that, it, for, which seems obvious, but sometimes we have to have studies to prove this to our you know to the liberals that you know immigrants that learn English on average will earn double what immigrants who don't know English earn. So, as you said, it's this is a way to actually help people uh, get you know get ahead in this country so it's it's it does it does them no good to keep them in a, a kind of a, a linguistic isolation yeah it, it really doesn't if you're gonna hand out driver's license exams in spanish or do the pledge in spanish and just encourage people hey spanish is great here what if they get a job opportunity in nebraska and now mm-hmm. all of a sudden most of those people are english speaking mm-hmm. and there is no driver's license exam in spanish now they're they're going to be uh, crippled or hindered. So right. it's not helping people to, to, to enable them to not learn English whatsoever. Now, now, can you stick around for the next segment, Bob? Because I, I, I really got to ask you about this whole Puerto Rican thing. Is oh, it, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, if you, if you could stick around through the break. How, how much time we have, Brian? We got about one minute, so I'd like you to stick around. Puerto Rico and the whole Commonwealth thing is a very interesting <laughs> Yeah, Subject. it's it's not on the radar screen for a lot of people, but we've been tracking it, and I, I'd love to share our what we've been what we've found out uh, to your listeners. That that will be that'll be wonderful. We're talking about ProEnglish.org, the nation's leading English language advocates. You have to go to this website. There's tons of information, including what states English is the official language, and believe it or not, a lot of states it is not. It does not have official English legislation. We got plenty more with Bob Vandervoort next. I'm Dave Merlino. You're listening to GNN. to the Dave Merlino Show. Welcome back to the program. Please check out ProEnglish.org. I've just posted it up on my Facebook page. The Facebook page is the Dave Merlino Show. And we're speaking with Bob Vandervoort from ProEnglish.com, the executive director. And, and Bob, thanks so much for, for staying with us. I, I really- hey, Dave. Yeah, it's great to be here. I really appreciate it. Now, here's the thing, Bob. See, I'm painted as a right-wing guy, don't get along with anybody, the mean hater, the rotten son of a gun, and here I am having a nice discussion with a guy from Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> well, who'd, who'd have guessed? <laughs> <laughs> See, we can all get along. Now, this ProEnglish.org website is awesome. I've been checking it out, and one thing that caught my eye is Puerto Rico, and I want to talk about that with you. Sure. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to admit 
I do not know how a commonwealth wealth works. And, and, and so Puerto Rico, to me, is in some kind of quasi, not a state, but somehow part of the U.S. They're in some kind of uh, a no man's land, if you will. And it looks like your website is, is talking about that. What, what is the issue at hand? Well, uh, you, you just that's just it. Uh, you know, for, for a long time, the, the island of Puerto Rico has been a U.S. commonwealth, which means they don't have all of the uh, advantages of statehood, but they don't have some of the, the responsibilities that go along with that. And so they can and we, we can enter to Puerto Rico without passports. They can come here. They're born. They're American citizens. They serve honorably in our in our nation's military. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of advantages that Puerto Rico and America has from their retaining Commonwealth status, and most Puerto Ricans have voted in referendum in the past to retain that status. Uh, there's a small percentage of of Puerto Ricans on the island who are more nationalistic minded, and they'd love to be an independent nation. And then there's also a a bigger group that want to push for Puerto Rican statehood. And they want to make Puerto Rico the 51st state. And uh, the politics are are a little bit complicated, but essentially uh, Congress, our U.S. Congress, has tried to pass bills to encourage Puerto Rico to vote on the issue of statehood. And and in recent years, this this has not passed. So the Puerto Ricans this year decided to take matters into their own hands and through their own Puerto Rican legislature, they were pushing a bill that would give Puerto Ricans another opportunity to vote on on what kind of status they want for their island, whether it's statehood, commonwealth, or or to be an independent nation. And essentially what happened is they, the pro-statehood forces drafted the language in such a way uh, to, to try to make it more difficult for Commonwealth status to pass. And basically, as this bill was moving through the legislature, we at Pro English requested to testify in one of their committee hearings. And we even, you know, we we pushed that very strongly, but uh, they denied our request to physically go down there and, and testify. But they did allow us to submit written testimony, which we did do, and that that went into the record. And basically, our position was if they if they want to be a state, they need to make it clear to the to the Puerto Rican people that they have to adopt English as their official language, and that that's going to be the language of governance and the language that's taught in the schools. Because pro English's position is we just can't have a state where 96 percent of the of the people speak a, a language that's that's other than what we in America speak. No, and it makes sense, and it makes sense that you guys are involved with that. So we will. We will keep your eye on that. So you're you're okay with them being a state or, or or being independent nation. It's just if they become a state, obviously, you you're you're encouraging that English be the, the national language. So they should ought to be aware of that. And if it is the official language, they have to deal with that if they become a state. Well, that's that's correct. Yeah, and and just to give you a little more history, uh, in in the past when territories had large, U.S. territories had large non-English populations like Louisiana, New Mexico, Oklahoma, before they were admitted as states, the U.S. required that they make English their official language for government and schools. So there's nothing unusual about making that a requirement for Puerto Rico if they want to be a state again. However, as as you can imagine, the, the multiculturalists go into a tizzy uh, about that position. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to call you all kinds of rotten names, Bob. We're speaking with Bob Vandervoort from ProEnglish.org. Now, on your homepage, and by the way, check this website out. It is it is fantastic. Tons of information. Even has a map of all the states that have English as the official language and all of the ones that, that don't. But on your homepage, there's some sort of video here, the problem with official bilingualism in Canada. Mm-hmm. Can you give us some information on that? And uh, you know, obviously they they have French and English up there. What what what, what is? And it's probably a a detailed issue. But what is the problem? Can you sum that up? Well, it's 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 it it really ties in again with the, with the issue of of Puerto Rican statehood. Uh, Canada has for years had to deal with the problem of having two different languages. Uh, uh, 
French and English. And in, of course, in Quebec, most of the people there speak French. And in the rest of Canada, uh, you know, they speak English. And so as an attempt to accommodate the French speakers, all sorts of laws have been passed and uh, requiring, you know, French language signs and, 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 and you know, the, all kinds of – everything has to be translated and, and to great cost to the Canadian taxpayers. And it also creates a, a sort of linguistic divide in that country. And, and, and that's one of our concerns about this idea of, of Puerto Rico being admitted as a state, you know, without any attempt to address the, you know, the, the linguistic issue, the language issue. Okay, Bob. Well, I've I've checked out your website and, and I've picked out a couple of things that that caught my eye. I didn't mean to, uh, you know, be a dictator here. So, oh, no, so that's great. <laughs> so one, one, yeah, one thing I would also point out uh, to your listeners that they might find of interest and, and want to check out on on the website uh, if they go to proenglish.org. The, on the upper left hand corner, we've just put out a new uh, grid ranking all the presidential candidates, including Obama. Uh, where they stand on the issue of official English, uh, we've given them grades, and we based our grades on six different categories. And uh, I think that might be something of interest for them to check out as well. I just clicked on it. Um, Ron Paul gets an A. Newt Gingrich an A minus. Um, Mitt Romney gets a D plus. According <laughs> to you, holy, that is going to get some news. Well, you know, we hope so. We've been, uh, we've been a lot of. If you look at the website, you'll see a lot of the reasons his his score is so low is he hasn't answered the questions on a lot of these issues. So, and Obama but, gets an F. So at least at least Mitt is still ahead of Obama. He's got he's got that going for him. <laughs> yes. Obama is the president, and he gets an F. According <laughs> to you guys, that is just astonishing, Bob. I, I mean, I. Uh, I, I'm 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 saddened. I really am. But but I'm glad to see we have a couple of candidates that are getting A's and A minuses, and those include Bachman and Gingrich. Bob, it's been a pleasure. Hey, I'd like to stay in touch. Follow yeah. up follow up with you next year. You know, sure. w- we'll go over this again. I, I put the website up on our Facebook page, ProEnglish.org. Bob, have a great Christmas, happy holidays, and and we'll be in touch. Thanks again. Thanks, Dave. It's been great. Thanks a lot. You got it. That is Bob Vandervoort, everybody. ProEnglish.org. We got plenty more straight ahead. I'm Dave Merlino. You're listening to GNN.